You could have heard this episode 40 hours early on our Patreon, patreon.com slash IndieHeadsPodcast. But join us for as low as $1 a month. You are a episodes early, getting access to our Discord server, and get yourself an Indie Heads Podcast sticker. All our upcoming episodes, you open our Patreon 48 hours where it hits our public podcast feeds. But if you're hearing this through our Patreon feed, we thank you so much for your support. We especially want to thank our Real Ones patrons, including Beck KTN, George Mikowski, Matt Cameron, James Boss, Marcy Anime, Chance Hold Up, Delaney Mothman, Josiah Duncan, Jenna, Grant in the Back of My Dragula, Nicole Rifkin, Midwest Maxwell, Parker Gross, Rena, Ian, Chris Wade, Dr. Pepper Officially Licensed Penis Exploder, Tim's Discount Prices, Andrew Grieve, J. Slashles and Up Nerds, Matthew Taylor, I Like Books, Sarah Moore, Griff, Max Kapazinski, Mark Berry, Cal50, Jake Wald, Grant, Rob Marino, Max, Dylan, Zach, Gavin Farney Freak, and Maze Farms. To become a real one, consider supporting us for $5 a month on Patreon and receive a bonus episode every month and get a shout out at the top of the pod. Anyways, though, enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Indie Heads podcast. I am one of your hosts, Maya Monroe. I'm here with Max. I'm here with Jackie. And Jackie, why are we here today? We are here once again to discuss one of my favorite topics, a a topic that I have received great feedback. The people, literally people come up to me in the streets and they say, Jackie, Jackie, I love club songs to suck and fuck you. That was a great episode. Of the Which heads Jackie, podcast. by the way, I, not joking, not joking. There, we, I can't, I can't, ex, I can't explain further. But no, genuinely, people did come up to Jackie people, and people, me and be like, "I love that." People is maybe the wrong person. Person, come, person, person, come up to me in the streets and they tell me, <laughs> "Person, come up." <laughs> but, but um, jokes aside, I did not know when I was planning this episode that I would be coming hot off of the heels of awful episode April. So this is not, this may seem like... <laughs> yeah, this is really exciting uh, stuff. This is the best th- music th- we've listened to in a while. <laughs> I, I was yeah. going to say, on one hand, it may seem like I'm extended that, but also it's like, because I didn't want to make this episode even uh, as torturous as some of the last episode was. I mean, there, 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 there's a little bits of it in here. We'll get into it. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I think there's just a lot of comedy on this episode, more so than on the last episode. Uh, but, yeah. But intentional comedy as opposed to unintentional comedy. This know? playlist like, is going to make you laugh, and it's also going to make you think. Uh, I think Jackie's composed a great post for us tonight uh, that's full of laughter and full of some good tracks. Um, and you hear horny club songs, ha ha ha. They're gonna make a lot of sex <laughs> jokes or sexual lyrics. Um, they do. So cover your ears. Yes, yes um, this is this is uh, this is a seventeen NC seventeen. This is an NC seventeen episode. This is if you have a child in the car, maybe change there's it. No, no one, no one with children. Actually, that's not true. There's probably someone with children. There probably is, Jackie. Uh, uh, listeners, We're, uh, members scary. of the Discord, uh, if you have a child, you <laughs> told us about. You have, I will say, I'm. If you it does again. Such a T voice. <laughs> Sorry, wife. I can't mow the lawn right now. I have to listen to the Indie Heads podcast. I mean, it's already crazy we, enough we that like wives. we know multiple married people that exactly. do listen to this podcast. I think if someone has kids and they listen to us, I, I do. I like it, like actively listens, Thank like you. is like a weekly listener. That's where we've gone too far as a society. But again, this episode, as Max said, it's going to make you laugh. It's going to make you think. And you know, hey, you might get a, you might. You know, here's the thing. This episode is a big test for us, as of course we have committed to the no fab lifestyle. We have committed to 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 to, to I never fab. Never agreed to that. Um, I, well, I did. Okay. I I agree to the oath. Sorry, if you two. So this episode, I guess for me, I guess Max is a little uh, stinker. Does not want to commit to right. to you know changing his life for the better. Uh, this is a real test. All right, I cannot I cannot break. All right, I can't break. Edge. All right, you know I gotta. All right, I'm just gonna pull up a message from uh, Recon EG13. Uh, May 22nd, 4.37 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time work for y'all. I may have plans that night, so I want to give myself a solid out time so I can maybe... (laughs) I'll let you, the listener, (laughs) determine whether... You think Maddie is? Wow. I would have said some that part. <laughs> I think I presented some. <laughs> that, 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 that was an aggressive contrary. way to start this episode. 
Damn, I didn't mean. I was just trying to joke. I was just trying to make jokes. <laughs> Max sorry, just came Maddie. with the fucking receipts. I'm sorry. <laughs> he came with the fucking receipts. I'm sorry. I don't even I know if that's going to happen tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the thing. I said. I said. I said. I never fab. I never said. I, I don't. Okay. Yes. I said I never fab. Maddie, Maddie, there's difference. You're, Maddie, you're Maddie got Mike some real. I was about to say he got some real and never looked back. Yes, exactly. Or I'm trying to get some. Trying to get some real. <laughs> All right, we gotta get into it. Uh, all right, our first song. Um, okay, first off, for this at least this first song, we oh, gotta yes. say I, off jump. I gotta, I gotta. R.I.P. R.I.P. G.J. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, part of the reason why we've returned this this time around is that uh, uh, earlier this year we lost D.J. Dion and also uh, Dookie Man, who we're gonna talk about later. Um, but D.J. Dion is. Uh, not only in very important to this particular series of playlists, pretty much the the instigator of me doing this series at all, but also just like a very influential person on the history of club music generally. Like he's one of the many people that gets shouted out on Daft Punk teachers. He's like a foundational person to like and the sound of current uh, house club techno etc. music and like uh, as Nicky Nair said around the time he passed like you can play like a shitty youtube rip of like any random dj dion song in a club right now and that shit will still go crazy like some people do like edits where they like update like the production but like really like his own production and like really when you dig into the back catalog especially if you go on Bandcamp, his Bandcamp page that's still up has uh remastered versions of a lot of the same songs that are on streaming and all of that sort of stuff like the canon is is really deep that dude made an insane amount of music and a lot of it deals in sucking and fucking and uh yeah i wanted to start things off with another one of what i think is like the actual best dj d on songs in terms of him rapping and it being good uh yeah yeah let's play this song He's kind of like a your favorite DJ's favorite DJ situation. He is. He's got a lot of monthly listeners. I don't think he had that many when we first when we did our first episode. I, I have to go back to the recording. I think some of it is like see he, what it was at. He has a couple of tracks that have been big streaming hits and like his more recent collaborations with people like Dance System, aka uh, Elvis. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at the last couple of years, he's been, like, very steadily releasing stuff. Some of which is, like, updated yeah. or re-released versions of old tracks. And some of it are, like, new tracks that he made. Yeah, like, there's Let Me Bang 2K23, you know? Yeah. Like. I will say, I, so, the last episode we did this, uh, I, I probably described it as sort of a grueling experience. Uh, but I, I, again, I'm, I'm here with a much more open mind and it's kind of funny that like, I'm saying that because I think, I think part of it, Jackie, is that I haven't been to a rave in a really long time and I miss it. And this kind of reminds me like, okay, like I think the last time that I was at any kind of similar to a rave experience was like when I was back in LA in December, watching you do, uh, watching you DJ for a little bit, um, that, that was the last time and even then that wasn't like totally there because it was like people were switching off and then like it was Hannibal Burris doing yeah. his rap stuff exactly so it wasn't even like a real like a real rave shit yeah I, and I this song is really fun it is a little bit um same fucking song again as one of the other songs we we played last time like the way it starts but I think it's just so good I, I, I get this one so, so stuck in my head a lot the very beginning of it yeah, DJ Dion has a, a knack for like the first 30 seconds of a track creating like a little vocal hook that you like that'll stick in your brain yeah. for for a while after the song's over. Um this is really impressive. He's he's really uh influential on uh Rashad, mm-hmm. I think, especially and the way that like without necessarily using a pop sample, you can just take a, a like a two note little acid loop and like two words like fucking sucking or whatever. And like that can be enough to create a hook that is as catchy as any like pop edit is. And then you can weave those together and build energy up with them. And yeah, this is this is just yeah. good stuff. I I feel I like the DJ last DM episode we, we covered the dick suck, um, which is kind of crazy. Um, 
and a very funny song. <laughs> we, 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 have some, we have some songs we like do. that. They this don't come from that, Dion, that sure. um, but I feel like we kind of painted him in more of an evil light in the last episode. We did give him some praise. We didn't. Um, we didn't. <clears throat> I did. Marty, I think I, I, I probably I, did, I, I, but I regret. I, re- I regret I've, that. I've re-listened to the episode since DJ Dion has passed away. You don't have to be too apologetic about it. Oh, we were cool. fine, but Neat. yeah, no. Like I, I, I think that was that was a fun episode. But also, I very specifically chose songs in that episode that were all specifically about fucking and sucking. Like, I, as you can tell in this playlist, I wanted to feature different artists, some of our, our favorites from last time, but also just, like, give a wider span of, like, the, what musical lineage this existed, because last time I was just kind of trying to overwhelm you. And also, I picked a couple of songs last time that are longer. Like, all of the songs this time mm-hmm. are four minutes or less, because... Really, when you're listening to music, as I've told you before on the last episode, like you're never really hearing one of these songs for that long, especially these kind of quick songs that you, you can really rapid transition one into another like very quickly. Um, also, yeah, there's definitely like it, it, like these are made to be blended e- e- at times. Like, like, like even these songs that are on the Debo G Chronicles, like you can tell that this is how it's meant to be because this four minute song actually has like several different segments versus the other ones that we listen to, where it's like this is one thing the whole time. But the useful thing about that for a DJ is if it's one thing the whole time, I don't have to think about what's going on on that like turntable, right? It can just be doing mm-hmm. that. And I can be thinking about whatever thing I'm like layering over the top of that, as opposed to be worried about what's going to happen when that song changes. It never changes over there. DJ Dion is saying like fucking suck and work and dick like, or I've looped that <laughs> or, or I've looped that specific phrase over and over again while I introduce some like new melodic idea in the other song or whatever. Like mm-hmm. that's basically yeah. the, the gist of it. Um, and why and why you have those tracks that are so bare bones because it like allows you to fit other stuff in, into those negative spaces more easily. But yeah, no, mm-hmm. I wanted to make this a little more listenable, even though I have I have thrown some curveballs into the mix. But for the first part of the playlist, we're just disca- we're discussing some of uh, some favorites and also just some, I think, canonical horny club songs. And I think that's a perfect transition to our next track which is, of course, Horny by Moose T and Hot and Juicy. Uh, there's several edits of the song, but I decided to do what I think is, like, I believe the original, like, version of this. I also made this episode gayer, if you can't tell. Yeah, I was going to say, there's some, there's, some, there's some gay stuff on this episode, you know? I, I, Just, again, I, nothing I, wrong with I, it. I, nothing I, wrong with it. I Just... was uh, sending some stuff to Grant, and Grant was very excited about um, someone who we're going to talk about later on this episode. I think I have an idea. Oh, I think I know. I think I know who. <laughs> exactly. I, I think I already know. Yeah, I already know who. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, I will say you did a good job because, like, yeah, I, I think part. I think part of the reason why I enjoyed listening to this more was like you. You specifically were trying to pick like good songs, except for one that was really bad, and then you realize, oh, well, that's the wrong song. Well, anyways, that one, the, that the one name I was couldn't wrong. even listen to, and I and I already knew what it was. It's just that, yeah, for whatever reason, one of the albums on here, all of the things are uploaded wrong on Spotify, so. I had a little bit of difficulty mm-hmm. picking for that reason, but also I didn't want to uh, slander Rodley by choosing that song in specific. Exactly. You can't pick the one where he's <laughs> sa- sampling fucking South Park. We'll, yeah. we'll, get, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. I was yeah. uh, I was listening to this playlist while I was like running, um, and I was I was locked in, and then that song came on, and I, I got so confused. <laughs> I thought like the playlist <laughs> ended or something. I didn't know what happened. I was like Jackie. No, that 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 is really I, I, that was really aggressive. I kind of felt like I wasn't bringing the heat in this episode, and I think that was me like trying to overcompensate for 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 not bringing the heat. But uh, don't worry. I think the thing we picked, we replaced it with, is appropriately still uh, insane. But this is this is obviously like very very pop this sounds like the pop crossover house new jack swing hits except that there's just someone saying horny like 500 times and that's really the only thing that's different about it than like your standard 90s house hit but it's great yeah this is fun i love this track 
I love. Little, yeah, I don't know how kind to of acid healthy scents in there a little bit, <laughs> yeah. little little liquidy. It's also very similar. <laughs> I didn't know to, how to uh, say it. Say it um, other than the percolator bounce. The, 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 the <laughs> melody is really similar to a uh, gypsy woman. She's homeless uh, by Sh- a Cheryl uh, Crystal Waters. Excuse me, not Cheryl Waters. Mm. That's like one of the most famous like Chicago house tracks. And and uh, like, what if what if Cheryl Waters was a secret house head? You know, like just. Uh, Secret, like, horny house head, you know? I mean, like, I imagine Cheryl, Cheryl Waters has has a... I mean, Cheryl Waters grew up in the 90s. Like, all this shit. I know. We love Cheryl Waters. She's, lo- she's the best. A lot of, like, retro, like, house stuff that's becoming popular now was, like, popular on the U.S. radio just in, like, pop form, you know? Like... Mm-hmm. Anywho. Yeah, that, that's a that's a, a great fun song. I played the radio edit as to not... As part of my, my theming of not making it too uh long but yeah no that song rules there's a really good oh my i can just pull it up on my computer here um i i really like the radio slave remix of this which is much longer um but yeah there, there's a lot of good uh edits out there of this song shout out to moose t who has a couple of other good kind of yeah like new jack swing house hits uh next up this is a favorite yes. of my, Max and I. This is just like basically Max and I very briefly documenting our shared friendship and and aff- aff- affinity for <laughs> affinity for just saying like random footwork hooks to ourselves. Um, yeah. This is, Which uh, speaking of, I, we, you mentioned Rash- DJ Rashad earlier. And I think a big thing between the, uh, the last episode oh, and this true. one yeah, I forgot. is that I got really in a double cup. I, I, I it finally clicked with me. So like. I think I'm, I'm coming to this with like it's like okay my my brain power has been unlocked all right yeah. like I, I I see I'm seeing things I wasn't seeing before. I feel like footwork kind of takes a little bit to unlock to you, and until you unlock that, it's very indecipherable. It's like what? At least in my case, I was like, what am I listening to, and like, how does this work? I, I don't understand it. I, and then it. I, I will say I also had like for for me like footwork. Well, like the well, the first thing was like the DJ Rashad song that's in the GTA Five soundtrack. I just don't like that song. I just don't. I just never like that song. And then also, like when I think of footwork, I think of uh, the nine eleven footwork song uh, <laughs> that Mega sixty four likes to make fun of. Oh, it's so good uh, though. It's so good. It, it is very good, which I think it, it is very good. Like it it, it is like, it is it, it, it swung it, it, back around to unironic appreciation. Yeah, that thing is. At the time, at the time, Mega Sixty Four was doing that. It's like, oh, ha ha! These people put work in nine eleven. Now, in the world where we like sincerely appreciate Toby Keith's the "Angry American," which is like a terrible, an objectively terrible song, we gotta hand it yes. to people put footwork for nine eleven. There are worse things to be doing immediately after nine eleven. I don't, it, it was like years. It was like the video was uploaded in like two thousand seven. I, I, I think that's <laughs> the thing. I think it was just a footwork battle oh. that was happening, and the person just said it to the the the. the anyways, we should They're move on. Do, do, Jay, do, 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 I, I feel like do do you realize the video that I'm talking about? Oh, I know, ex- Matty, I know exactly what you're talking about. I was Let's like, God it for bless posterity, the U.S. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real, real just, quick, just in yeah. case. Our listeners if, if, if uh, you're don't at home, know. You can, of course, just uh, YouTube 9/11 footwork. God bless the USA. Into the World Trade Center. Like I said, every every year, every 9/11, Wait, I come back. Was to there. God bless. Yeah. DJ, oh, is that a, is that an actual like known guy in the it, footwork? Yes, yeah, it is. yeah. I posted a fuck? DJ Nate song on my Instagram story today. <laughs> But yeah, literally every 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 year I come back and watch this, and I just I my I, a smile comes upon my face, you know. Like God, July Fourth, nine eleven, any day where I get to remember our great country that we live in, I, I come back and I and I listen to this song and I watch these dudes just killing it on the footwork. It's, it's important that in a Windows Movie font, uh, occasionally in the video, it will flash nine eleven taken over, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but it's provocative. It's provocative. I've told you guys uh, about when I lied about my uncle dying on 9-11, right? I believe so. <laughs> yeah. I, you probably did, but I, I, I want to hear it again. I, okay. I, I would be more shocked if you hadn't already yeah. told me that. You know, um, like, I can, I'm not I can, reacting. I can give you like a 30 second. Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah, you, you it, told us about this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was in sixth grade Spanish class. Um, it was on 9-11. Um, we were picking out names for our Spanish class 
Um, and we were like looking at the book. And for some reason, I was just super caught up about 9-11 that day. And I was like crying <laughs> and I didn't know what to do because it was like the first week of middle school. And I didn't want to be the kid that was crying for no reason. Um, so when it got to me to pick my name out of the book to have a Spanish name, uh, I said, I'm, I'm, my, my name is going to be Carlos uh, in honor of my uncle Carlos that died in the Twin Towers. Um, <laughs> And then I went to the I went to the counselor's office after that to sell it, and they're like, you know, if you need anything, you can come back. And we never talked to that counselor again. Never brought it up. Uh, yeah, probably my craziest lie I've ever had. Uh, but that's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is insane. I'm trying to think like. Like, is that like an always sunny level thing? Like faking your death? Like, that's like a Seinfeld. It, you know, like, it, that's it, like a Seinfeld it is, It's more Nathan Fielder. Is, is more yeah. It is. Jesus Christ. Um, anyways, let's get back to the playlist. Uh, let's let's listen to, from uh, DJ Gantman. It's Juke That Girl. A song I have on my computer and have in the DJ mix too. I juke that girl from the back. This one, yeah, this one, I think pretty much everything here, except for I've not listened to the, the new, the, I've not listened to oh. uh, the uh, David song. Oh, that, that, I listened that, to one yet, yeah, I didn't have time. That, that'll be good. It, 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 it's not that hard, because that's, Matt, remember all the tracks are incorrect, like, they're shuffled. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So every track title and artist is, like, incorrect. I'll tell you, yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you what it actually is. Okay. There. But this one's a fucking banger. Like almost all, almost every single one on this playlist is, yeah. is a is a banger. This is this is another one that is like an intrusive thought level of catchy. Like you will just be walking around the house, being like from the back to middle and around again, a juke that girl and a friend. Like it's so it's like nursery rhyme level catchy, but like not in the way that we did last episode, where it's like kind of silly, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the real base point for this album, um, if you're looking for anything on Spotify, Juke City Volume One. It is very, uh, very kind of foundational to this playlist and a lot of like the uh, post 2000 like footwork movement uh, in Chicago. Yeah, there there are a lot of yeah like Tracksman, DJ Nepets, uh, DJ Gantman, DJ Spin, Ms. Three One Three. There's a lot of yeah, uh, but a lot of those and also I always tell people. Uh, as we're on Footwork Corner, if you like DJ Rashad and Double Cup, you should also check out his extensive catalog of EPs because he didn't just make one classic album and die. Like he has a lot of fucking music uh, out there. A lot of it is very good, and pretty much yeah, like all of it is. There's a very very. I mean, sometimes he'll have a song that can be like kind of repetitive or annoying in the way that like any club producer inevitably will when you're making a lot of songs that are just one word right you can make one that can mm-hmm. be but also you can i have a lot of songs that are like annoying but like if i deploy them exactly correctly it can it, 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 it can work you know you, you you can you can sell a corny joke if you tell the setup right right like it's exactly that, it's that kind of a thing Like I said, I'm just I'm just fucking vibing. Like this is just like I'm in I'm in the club right now. All right, I'm in the club mentally. I'm mentally, hella, I'm hella bricked up in the club. You've come a long way from being a GTA NPC. <laughs> that oh my god, yeah, that was. Did we tell oh that story last god. time? And that's, that was we we told the story. I think. I'm sure. But, I'm like sure. it's always fun to tell it again. Where it's like I think there's probably details I haven't told of that story that I'm probably I'm more comfortable to tell now because it's just more time away. Uh, obviously, the known that you gave me. I think it was only what like 20 milligrams. Yeah, just it was 20. Not, it was, which for me is a lot because 10 milligrams is enough to kind of like because that's what I, like when I like when I, whenever I was taking edibles to help I, I me sleep. Like I was doing 10. I think it was more that we just got you very stoned and then put you in an incredibly unfamiliar environment. And so yes. it's like the, the stimuli, it, that's really the thing is that like, and I probably had some alcohol. I don't know if I, I don't know for sure if I drank, oh, but like it wouldn't did, have surprised there was, me. There was some there. So you probably did. And we, and we yeah. Ubered, so you probably did. Yeah. That's, that's so I was very crossfaded and like, I was like, 
I think uh, I know for sure that's where I saw Boardlord for the first time. Yes, it was and I, again, Boardlord and Bastion and Goat. That's one of the yeah, first and, raves I went to post pandemic. It was great. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like sitting there in this like alleyway. I'm uh, two things are two two notable things. Number one, I came up with, with a new language in my head that I didn't understand. <laughs> like I was trying to figure. Like I couldn't. I could not. In, in like my the voice in my head, the air in my head was speaking, but in a language that I could not understand. And as I'm trying to decipher what I'm like thinking Jeez. in my head, it's already on to the next thing. And then also, uh, I like zoned out at one point. I was writing a very sad notes app, uh, like letter. Cause at the time, this is when I was, uh, dating my girlfriend at the time. We were like super long distance and I was like having my doubts about the relationship. So I was like literally a whole notes app thing, just like just spilling everything out. Cause I was in a real, I was in a real vulnerable state yeah. being crossfaded yeah, at the radio. No, I was just like, I gotta get this all out there. But, so, like I said, it was, again, a, ver- a real emotional time. And then I think we've probably also talked about the time where I was in line to the bathroom and well, a guy that, gave me a little bit that, of molly. That, that was also a little less... You, you, you made it kind of too real. The funnier version of that story is, is just telling people, oh, yeah, I gave Maddie an edible at the rave and he told me that he felt like a, a Grand Theft Auto NPC. Like, that's that's the funny. Guess what, Jackie? Life sometimes I know, is sad. I know. Life man. sometimes you is thought sad. This was going to be your storybook. This podcast. is an episode to make you think. This all right. We're, we're thinking here. Uh, we're thinking. But again, at the same time, I did feel like a GTA 5 NPC for the most no, part. That, that was a that, good. That, that was like a 20 minute block just, where I went. Uh, the setting. I got emotional with it. And then like, I went back to like, GTA t- PC t- mode. T- taking you to like your first real like club event like that and having it be in the alley for. Those of you that aren't from Los Angeles, the alley is is what it sounds like. It's an alley. It's literally just like in the fashion district of LA. They have a lot of buildings that are completely closed down at nighttime because they're not open during night. So it's like the only part of LA where there are warehouses and spaces where people can throw parties and not have to worry about noise complaints because there isn't any residential like part of those blocks. That's Anyways, crazy. Yeah. So like... uh in between two like during the, during the day are like full like um it's like a, it's like almost like a market because it's like because it was yeah, yeah, they yeah, had like yeah, the yeah, metal that, drawers that, thing that's so. the thing is that like during the day it, the fashion district of la is like entirely these like wholesale fashion stores that people go down to that are all located in one area that are like yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's and and all of these like loft spaces like i stayed in an airbnb there once it was a really weird experience um but like basically that like literally between two buildings that i imagine are owned by the same person that does this and they just close it off so you're not in like a venue space you're literally just outside between two buildings in a like closed off alleyway space and like inside one of the buildings you can go inside and use the bathroom and get a drink and like that's mm-hmm. the whole the whole thing and it it because i was always wondering like i'm like why is this not getting shut down like bro, this is fucking loud so i, I did not realize that like just it's not they, close they, enough they to they residential do. stuff that's the thing is that, but that's just like why yeah. all of I, 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 you, you don't want to get me on a. T- this happened uh, the other day when I was at <laughs> scenario where s- someone was in a very classic, like informed but not really that informed way. It was just like, oh, Berlin and New York are so much better for clubbing than Los Angeles and whatever. And without uh, getting in full axe grinding mode, because I did not, I did not tell this person like, hey, Berlin's not that great anymore. If you like believe. Palestine should be free, but anyways, that's a different conversation. Uh, when you say, I, I have when you say something boxes. so LA phobic, and you get hit with the Jackie stare. No, but not even that. I just like went into, and I did this a couple of times for Lily when I was talking about the city. But I was like, okay, so basically, like from a sociological city planning, uh, uh, government perspective, here is why clubbing in LA is not good, and the TLDR is basically that we have a two AM curfew, right? So you can't have events that go until four in the morning that have a liquor license that goes until four in the morning. Like, so, Mm -hmm. and, and so even though clubs could like, there's no law that says you can't have an establishment open past 2 AM, but if they can't sell liquor, like the economics of it just like don't work. Don't make any sense. Um, Would you blame that on Gavin Newsom? 
Uh, no, I would. That's all. That's been placed long before Gavin Newsom. But uh, <laughs> sorry, I was. I, I I don't I don't like Gavin Newsom. Don't don't get, don't get me wrong. That yeah, gruesome Gavin. I'm I'm happy to be like thanks Joe Biden about Gavin Newsom because he sucks in other ways. But that's it's yeah, a, a, LA there, specific. There there have been parts of. I think there was a law passed not too long ago. I think it just ended in like West Hollywood or something like that, which sucks because I'd have to go to West Hollywood. But that's different. LA like, mm-hmm. actually grinds. Well, um, Isn't that where like Madame Tussauds and the <laughs> no, Madame Tussauds is in regular Hollywood one? Two, yeah, it's just regular Hollywood. And two, also no, saying Madame Tussauds is really that is like the most like um, foreign <laughs> tourist coming to Los Angeles like <laughs> at, ass uh, like landmark to pick. Yeah, God, people um, who are like I... weebs for going Anyways. to Five Guys. No, but uh, <laughs> what I was saying is just that, like, basically the combination of that and the combination of how sprawling our city is and that we have no public transit means that there are lots of people that like dance music here and there are lots of really good DJs. But because everyone is so spread out and then the only place you can really have these events is in downtown LA where you A, have rent that's cheap enough that some people can afford to own bases that have things happen in, but also, like, you have warehouse raves of semi-legality that do get shut down by police all the time, which is both mm-hmm. both why LA's club scene is good and bad, right? Because the alternative is that, like, in, in the European countries, like, they have a club scene that exists and, like, an economic tourist infrastructure. Like, Berlin embraces it. Berlin has realized that people come to their country because they like to dance all night. So Berlin has made it easier for these places to operate as like legitimate businesses, basically. But the problem with that basically is that it becomes super corporatized, right? Because if it if it can all be legitimized, all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, if there's a path to that, it's all going to become shitty in the way that like, if you go to any of the actual capital C clubs in Los Angeles, like the places where you could like get bottle service and reserve a table or whatever, and there are DJs playing, those places are like stuck in 2009, like musically. Yeah. And they are like also cost like a 60 double car- cover charge if you're just a person going to dance. Like they're crazy mm-hmm. expensive and they suck. And they're also really, and like, they they have better curation of those places in Europe a lot of the time, but a lot of the time. And so like, there's a really great episode of No Tags that gets into this in more depth than we're going to get into here. But highly recommend listening to the Nick Boyd and, uh, and Tony G episode of No Tags, which is a podcast hosted by Tom Lee of the label Local Action and Chal Ravens, who's a dance music journalist, both from the UK. Uh, and they are uh, they host a podcast that's about like dance music sometimes, but like honestly more about like music generally and music journalism and radio. And if you're not even interested in dance music, but you're listening to this episode for some reason, I recommend just listening to it because it rules. But like the uh, Nick episode is great just because he like pushes back on the Europe is better mindset because the thing about america is that in these places of, of uh semi-legality is like where all of the best dance music came from like the disco parties in new york city were not legal because they were thrown by black and gay people like they weren't you know like of course mm-hmm. it, and they were in loft spaces at the time where like downtown rent was cheap in new york city and it's like with all of these things, like the difference between clubbing in New York City and clubbing in LA, 99% of it comes down to like the rent be too damn high, comma, uh, we can't have liquor licenses that go until four or five in the morning, comma, uh, there's no good train system. So you have to spend a lot of money on Ubers at five in the morning, or, or you have to park your car in sketchy parts of Los Angeles and hope that nothing happens to it or et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Like, it's it there's a lot of logistical reasons that make it harder than in new york city where there's like six clubs that regularly book good djs and they're all on a metro line really close to each other it would be really nice if you didn't have to live in new york city and be around those people uh but that's another conversation and a third axe to grind for a different day we should talk about music again yeah, yeah, this let's is kind of like let's... your uh, hardcore kids be like tweet. It's like, yeah, true. LA, <laughs> that's, LA that's, be like, yeah. that's the really funny thing is that as 
I, I only poke fun at the, the hardcore kids joke is genius because I am just like that about different things. Like Jail and I talk about this all the time because Jail and I comes from the land of hardcore kids being like, whereas I do not. I come <laughs> from a different background and it's why we work so well together. But uh, no, I am I am uh, the combination of me being actually in the industry and also just being very invested in like nightlife culture. Yeah, I just know too much about all of this shit. Someone had the person at the party who I told this all to had the exact same reaction that you both just did, which was like, "Okay, lady, like that's a lot." That Scott was like, her, no, Scott she, cook. Although she told me like I would vote for you for office right now, like that was that was <laughs> so uh, again. We are officially announcing the DJ Horse Jeans campaign for president. Make Los uh, Angeles clubbing good again. I don't think you can run until you're what, like 35, 37. So it's going to be. I think for some city, uh, for for president, it's president is 35. I think for a lot of city offices, it's probably younger. You're probably good now. Yeah. You can, you could definitely become the mayor of LA. I think we can, again, Karen Bash, your days are numbered. You know who I think? I I was just, I I haven't tweeted this, but this is just a thought I've been having recently that feels tweet formatted. I think Serge Tankian could be mayor of Los Angeles. I think he has a wide enough constituency that if Serge Tankian ran for the democratic mayor of los angeles he could win that's how popular yeah. system of a down is here <laughs> is uh, Stephen Colbert in LA? Me... no he's in new york Stephen he's, Col- he's a new Stephen york Colbert guy. is a very midwestern turn new york guy he's not in la guy. yeah i i will that's say nice. with with serge tank in that jackie that, just, that does just make me think there is a non-zero chance that holiday kirk becomes his campaign manager now, if he were to run for mayor that's true. or at least he, beyond the staff he's probably, he's, probably, he's probably a little too radical like he's he's just further left than like your standard like eddie vetter is the ideal political profile for someone to run for mm. like a democrat how do you know the politics do you know politics of eddie vetter that was like his whole thing back He's, in the day, Max. Like he was. That's he, on me. You're sorry, Jackie. He, he, even even more so than, <laughs> than Kurt. Like Kurt was like disaffected and talked about political issues, but Eddie Vedder was like Mister Cause. Like he literally wrote "Pro Choice" in Sharpie on his arm when he performed on like the MTV. I just listened to the Bands Lane Pearl, Pearl Jam episode. You can tell. Um, but yeah, no. Like Eddie Vedder has always been. He just. Uh, I think who what was it that he just did? I, I think it was either Harrison. I think it was Harrison Budker. He told that guy to like fuck off or whatever for saying that like women shouldn't go to college or whatever. He's very like, um, he's the '90s version of like the women respecter guys. Like he's just like re- really eager feminist guy, but he was really hot, so women just like loved it for understandable reasons. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my bad. Um, no, no, totally. <laughs> Anyways, our next song from Dookie oh, wow. Man, it's Look what a, what Your Clip. What a transition. No one has ever transitioned from talking about Eddie Vedder into Lick Your Clip by Dookie Man. R.I.P. King. We should have gone I feel like if Dave we were talking Grohl. about Dave Grohl, this would have been like really, really, that would have been perfect. Yeah, that was quite that a That would have been a full a, circle a moment for the NBS podcast. Got on. This song's awesome. Uh, yeah, we've talked about songs about cuddling as before. It's true. Um, I just really like that... Uh, the entire vocals of this are done in a not even Kendrick voice in like in like a in like an itchy and scratchy cartoon voice. It's just so funny. It, <laughs> it literally sounds like a flash cartoon. Like the vocals, the the little whoop. It sounds like it's coming from like a fucking flash cartoon on Newgrounds and from it does, like two thousand. And it sounds like it was recorded into a two thousand four laptop microphone. Also, exactly. It's. The beat, go- like, like I said, the vocals. I think if this was the f- the first episode, uh, I would have hated this. But now my mind is unlocked, and I'm like, I, this is this fucking goes I will so hard. Say, like, Dookie Man's a Baltimore Club legend. This is <clears> the part of the episode where we have transitioned from the uh, last episode was entirely. I talked a lot about Detroit and Chicago club music history. This episode has a section in the middle here where we're just talking about Baltimore producers. Because uh, Baltimore has its own very rich and long club history that tends to get uh, less shine than even like Jersey Club or like other kinds of East Coast club music. Like less so in the last couple of years, like there's been a sort of revival of people like appreciating Baltimore Club because of people like DJ Swisha that are doing a lot of Baltimore Club influence stuff. But like Baltimore Club fucking rules. It's like bouncy like Jersey Club is. 
because it's got similar kick patterns, but it's got like the breaks uh, element that like early hip hop had. Because Baltimore Club is really kind of like the primordial American club music. I mean, like really all of club and dance music comes out of like funk in the 70s, essentially. Like Nick also talks about this on the Starry Records No Tag episode, but like Baltimore Club is really where like the origins of club music come from which is basically taking like soul samples chopped up over hip-hop drum breaks and then these like dance beats with drum machines and like the Baltimore Club stuff is just my fucking favorite also because they use the think break a lot which is my favorite of the various uh classic drum breaks there's the amen break is probably the most well known and is and is great I'm not anti amen break but the think the think break Great. Maddie, uh, Are there we're, breaks we're for other kinds of religions? <laughs> <laughs> the Amen break is not a religious. The, the the song that the Amen break is sampled from is has Amen in the title. It's called Amen mm-hmm. Brother by the Winstons. So it's called the Amen break for that reason. So ah. it, it, it's 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 it like samples a, I believe a gospel track. Maddie, let's do yeah. a quick uh, breaks lesson. Um, I'll pull up yes. to. Uh, here is the almond break. We'll play this one first just so people because this is the more let me I'll put it in the zoom chat. Do you know what the amen mm-hmm. break? Amen break. Yeah, that's I mean that's pretty again, very like probably the most one of the most sampled. Definitely the most sampled and most common. Like the, it the, again, it is a break that is literally the foundation of multiple and, genres, and it, it's more useful if you're a really good jungle producer because in those that little sixteen bars, there's a couple of different hits there, and the way that jungle tracks work is they'll chop that break up and like use the different hits multiple times and pitch them up and down and stuff like that. Like, oh, mm-hmm. did I just send the same one or no? Yeah, no, I just I was just playing it again just so listeners have it because I, I wanted it's a great break. I want to hear it. Yep. I wanted to hear it again. And here is uh, <laughs> wait. So like it is is like all jungle music kind of founded around the Amen break. Like it's kind of like it it's a, a requirement almost. Like if it doesn't have it, it's not jungle. It's not a requirement as much as it is that that is exactly it, is that like jungle music came out of people combining. Um, influences from re- reggae music and like dub and sound system culture with uh uk like hardcore like very early breakbeat rave stuff that was happening essentially at the time and so like it's not necessarily that something has to have amen or think breaks in it to be jungle but it does have to have drum breaks that are chopped up in that sort of a style right like you could mm. you 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 could use other less there are like less common drum breaks like my let's play the think drum break to give yeah. an example because you've probably heard this one too yeah very famous and this one tends to get used in baltimore club and jersey club more because if you speed this up it's much bouncier and like lighter on its feet than the amen break is like the amen break is very heavy and like crashing. yeah can we get that at a 1.25 yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna speed it up in a in a second. But also, this is also very famous, like hip hop. Totally, yeah. That, 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 that's the thing is that like all of these. This one's much more like again, like whereas like the almond break is much more in like electronic music. This one is like hip hop. Also, is is used pretty pretty commonly there. Totally, yeah. I, I heard also, those drums. If, I was if, like, if oh, you shit. slow down the almond break, then you've got like a lot of like uh fucking boards of canada like down tempo stuff like this, yeah like but both of these drum breaks are just like some of the most in it's really crazy to think about that that was a drummer that like one person one person did that <laughs> that's too fast that's too, that's <laughs> little, little too fast, fast. But that, that's, that was like one one ninety i'm let me try to guess oh yeah that's like 160 probably it's 150 is 1.5 let's see what one Okay, yeah. that sounds more like okay. Now that's you, the correct speed. Now, now you've got a nice little Baltimore Club groove going there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's every nineties That's, that's, that's a nice little a nice little lesson for you. Uh, also, if if you oh, let me pull up um, no, let me also add real quickly. Last last thing important. Sometimes you get the thing break, and this is the thing is that like sometimes people are sampling the original track, but mostly what happens is that like. Uh, there will be then 
a, a hip hop track that then samples the think break where the way that the hip hop track was produced, like it sounded extra, like cr- crunchy or crispy, or whatever they ran it through a compressor, etc. And like, so mm-hmm. there's like, I, I uh, posted about this on Twitter and like certain people were saying like, Oh, you can't just have the regular think break. You got to get the kid and play think break from this particular song. And so this is one think break variant, which is very common, which is that it has this. Yeah. And woo sample in it. Can you play this Maddie? Yes. Uh, as soon as you post, oh, it, is it in the Discord chat now? You're, you're confusing me, Jackie. Sorry, you're confusing sorry. me. I confuse myself. Too many, too many chats. Yes. Too many chats. Yes. Too many chats. See so, ya. Yeah. You ever it wonder, takes two to make a thing go right. If you, if you ever wonder what the inside of my brain sounds like at any given moment, it's it's, it's just probably, this. It's just this on a loop. Yeah. So th- there we go. Uh, again, some of the top comment, the Wilhelm scream of modern music. And that's, I, th- I that's pretty accurate. I, I think that's, that's a, that's a, that's an accurate. I feel like you could unlock uh, some comparison. crazy parts of your brain. If you listen to that on like a 10 hour loop when you went, just... but like that is, that is the kind of the cool thing about DJing is that like a, to be really good at it, you have to be a big ass dork, but like the more you do it, like you really do feel like you can see through the matrix because part of, the job of DJ is trying to figure out like, okay, I want to play this kind of music and this kind of music, like structurally, how can I select two kinds of music that are going to line up over each other? And in order to do that, like the easiest way to do it is to have an understanding of like, how is pop music structured? Like what is the beat that defines disco versus house? I mean, versus like understanding all of these different like lineages that these things are coming from allows you to be, to, to start to be like, Oh, well I see how these two styles are related. Cause I can play that over that. And it's like, you, you hear how they connect to each other basically. And it's like, yeah, it forces you to kind of be a dork about this shit because eventually you, you hear the same samples or drum breaks so many times that you're just like, I need to learn what this is now because, but yeah, no, like, uh, think about it was written by James Brown and is a song by Lynn Collins, uh, and was produced by James Brown. And so like, that's why people credit him as being like, essentially the person that like invented modern dance music. Right. Because like without James Brown and that seventies funk stuff, we wouldn't have like entire genres of dance music that exist now. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get to our next song, uh, I see I, I see this video Mozart if Think Break, and I just I just want to hear it really quick. Yes. I think it's like a... <laughs> there you go. Uh, that, again, just 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 to see how people interpret. Let's the, see, the that thing. made me laugh. Now this song will make me think. <laughs> now this song exactly. will make you think. Uh, let, let's listen to uh, this. So this is the one that has the incorrect titles. Oh, uh, sorry, we're back to Dookie. Um, move on. I was gonna say we'll, 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 we, 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 we kind of didn't talk to Dookie Man, but we have another Dookie Man track coming up. So let's just move yeah, on yeah, to the yeah. next one, which is a funnier one. <laughs> yeah, a funnier so, one. so this is um, man, you haven't heard this one. This is the replacement. Uh, yes. This is uh, the 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 song that was mislabeled as Hot Pussy. This is actually. Hot Pussy by Rod Lee, okay. who is a Baltimore Club producer. Uh, the real big, big three of Baltimore Club is Rod Lee, DJ Technics, Dookie Man. There's a couple of others, but. All right, yep, yeah, pop. That's. I needed to have yep, something. I needed there to have so- something with a uh, a cartoon sample. Can you identify yeah, what, what, is, that, what is this? This is Sylvester from Looney Tunes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I hear it. Now I hear it. I'm like, because I hear, I hear the lift. Yes. I hear the, 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 the lift. The lift would give it away. Yeah. This is, this is just two minutes of this. Yeah. But uh, Rodley rules. He's got, he's got a lot of, I mean, like the thing about Baltimore club tracks is almost even more than like early house and techno tracks. You can just play this shit now and it'll go off. Like these beats are just so great. And like they're really yeah. good at, at, at varying up the like sections of the track in a way that gives it that kind of um, pop music structure to it. Even when they're just doing something stupid like this. Like uh, uh, th- there are a lot of this whole um, greatest hits compilation, Baltimore Club Classics has so many great tracks that I couldn't include them all in this, including some that aren't even really horny. 
that I had to cut off like an uh, alcoholic chick that I left off this episode. <laughs> that wasn't really horny enough. It was just more about drinking. Um, yeah. But uh, well, that's for a different club songs to get wasted. This is, this is that's a whole. This is a great uh, uh, compilation of tracks. Some that are as silly as as. Actually, no, that, that that's the, the Dookie Man one. This one comes from Rod Lee's. Rod Lee has several. This is from Rod Lee Volume Four, The Pressure, which is incorrectly labeled on streaming, but all of Rod Lee's stuff is also very solid. Um, a lot of tracks that have been like resampled, like. Yeah, I feel like the way Spotify operates isn't very conducive to like how club artists share their music. That- I mean, yeah, that's that's the other thing too. Partly just because, yeah. They, they're releasing stuff all the time and stuff used to exist in physical form so the limited nature of it would be like they would only sell it at certain record stores and there'd only be so many copies of it so like DJs had to rely on their music and their collection and their friend music and that sort of stuff more than nowadays and so like a streaming environment isn't really suited to it yeah you're exactly right because people also it's not so much for listening to the songs as just individual standout things, right? It is to be used for the purposes of DJing. And so like yeah, having them exist like this, yeah, that's kind of what we talked about last time a lot, that it's like this format of an episode is kind of intentionally uh, uh, putting these songs at a disadvantage because it's just like not like how they contextually would be consumed most of the time you know not even just like that we would be dancing and drunk right now but that like literally like oh no yeah like the the whole point of songs like that is that like two hours into playing stuff that is making you dance that is less silly like that's the thing about I, i i have a lot of thoughts about playing silly music uh, I think I've cited before, maybe on the last episode, but my favorite uh, Bastion Goat tweet, a great Bay Area producer who once tweeted that um, if you play a fire track, it'll make people dance. But if you play a goofy fire track, that will make people remember your ass. Uh, and it's true, because even though we don't want to admit it, DJs are clowns. We are we are uh, put on we put on the red nose and we dance for the people. Um, and uh, I think that there is a difference between playing something that is like a quote unquote meme edit or something where like it's just a lame joke and the whole point is, is like isn't it funny that I'm playing this? I'm not a fan of that. There are a lot of DJs that just like abuse that and try or try to be like post ironic or whatever. Like Dylan Francis and his consequences on society, if you know who that is, etc. Like but yeah. what I'm what I'm talking about is more so songs that are songs that are actually good in like the construction of the dance music bones of them is and dylan on, francis and, like the hoodie allen of uh, music kind of that's, that's not that's it's, not it's, it's not totally not, off it's not t- i would describe him more he's as, more he's, I don't he's know like who, light i diplo. don't know who he is i i would here's he's, how, he's like light diplo he's yeah, he's, I, he's I, diplo adjacent, is, adjacent. Is, is i would say he's like uh halfway between diplo and like Lil dicky where it's oh. like his whole his whole thing was like, I am seriously trying to be a, a DJ, but also all of my social media is goofy and my stage banter is goofy. And I have this like very, uh, I mean, I definitely thought he was funny when I was like 14. Right. But like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really like, and he, he sounds, sounds like, he yeah, sounds yeah, like uh, you're uh, describing Mark Rebelat. Uh, un, no, unlike he's not he's not as cringy as Mark Re- Reveille. It was more just like he had a hit song called like I don't give a fuck or shit or whatever. Like like it, it was mm-hmm. very 2013 pizza era. Random, yeah, like a whole stuff. sentence written on the front of your shirt. Kind but of. like at least he was like actually DJ and not just like taking off his clothes and dancing in his underwear and being like I fuck with the pussy. Um. Mm-hmm. uh anyways what we again we are we are almost an hour into the recording we yeah, gotta we, we gotta yeah we're really we gotta speed it up yeah we gotta Max speed it up a little have bit been uh let off the leash this episode <laughs> we gotta um, we gotta speed it up uh is this the one that grant was really excited yes, about of course we're gonna okay. talk about a legend uh miss tony aka big tony miss tony is a uh a, a baltimore vogue club music legend and uh, we're gonna hear from Miss Tony a lot on this track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miss Tony, aka Big Tony, is sharing their opinions on this episode. 
This is again, this is again another banger, another banger here. This one is a banger. I will say, I think this one definitely seems to be uh, leaning more on the Baltimore club stuff, whereas I think the first episode is much more like Detroit, Chicago. Totally, yeah. We're definitely in more Baltimore territory here. With Which this is probably just in like particular. where I've been at musically over the last several years. If anyone saw my DJ yeah. set this week, like Baltimore and Philly and New Jersey club has been just like a lot of because I already had spent a lot of time like digging backward in the history of Chicago and Detroit music and like I, I realized that I didn't have the same familiarity with these other US regional club styles that are like becoming more and more influential nowadays uh, I really recommend there's a well hold on I'm gonna let Miss Henry talk for a second <laughs> That is again. That is the line that it does that, is, that has stuck with me for this episode. Is the PhD in ecology? I mean, hey, who's who's among us? Not me, of course. I, and I, just I, great advice well, all around. Like, Big Tony has got the balls. PhD in dickology. Brian Pumper has the PhD in pussyology. I think he got. I think that's a fraudulent degree. Yeah. I think we got. We got to. Yeah, we, like we, Big Tony. When Big Tony <laughs> says that, I'm like, okay, I believe Big Tony. Brian Pumper. Brian Pumper his, that's his where I'm like, there, there, there needs to be a uh, from the University of Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, we we didn't really talk at all about like Vogue or like ballroom or any of that but obviously like that's the really big part of like the east coast club tradition as opposed to the uh like midwest um regional club genres oh Mm -hmm. Oh, this uh i i have a uh ariel's uh zatina song that samples that little part right there the some it's not ariel's zatina it's the uh, twofold shout out to twofold uh Maddie, can I play something really, really scary and cool real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, cool. Send it over. Uh, Are you trying to scare us? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is just more on the like Jalen side of 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 uh, footwork post. Uh, See this episode. It makes we're doing you think, education. It makes you laugh. We're doing laughing. And we're, it makes, we're doing we're laughing. It makes you we're yeah, educating uh, ourselves. Shout out to Miss Tony. Miss Tony's great. Okay, see this. Okay, this album cover Club Cuts for Nikki. This little cute little cat. Well, we cute little cat. Twofold. Oh, oh, a cute little black cat. And uh, apparently we're going to get scared. So let's, let's, let's find out if we get scared. Sometimes I feel just like a woman. And if you don't know okay. me, ask your father. <laughs> Okay, we're getting a little s- spooky. Gay and spooky. But you know what, y'all? Sometimes I feel just like a woman. And if you don't believe me, ask your father. Is this, is this Big Tony? Is that the sample? It is, yeah. Or just... Okay. Yeah, this is... Spooky and scary. This is like, all right, like, Tony wouldn't do this. I just feel like, like, haha, I'll fuck your dad. And this is where I was like, no, I will fuck your dad if you it sounds like look at me the wrong way. Fast forward a little bit, Manny. Oh, yeah. I feel just like a woman. Ooh. And if you don't believe me, ask your father. Yeah, this song is really sick. There's a lot of twofold uh, has like just like the most drums. There's a lot of twofold tracks that are just like drums on very drums minimal. on drums. Yeah, very sick. There we go. Uh, let's 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 finish off with with bitch Tony as we uh, tr- again yes. this next this next track the next track we're just gonna let it transition we're just gonna let it, this track go to the next one. 
Because oh, you'll, oh, yeah. you'll find out pretty soon what it's called. Oh yeah, yeah. We we, we should we should allow the track to play before we uh because there, there's there's a little bit of play on words in the way that they've chosen to spell the title. You see, so I want to let the listeners hear it. I don't want to be like when you have the the subtitles on yeah. and you're watching a comedy and the the, the timing gets spoiled. A very Dora the Explorer situation here coming up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's listen to another track from Dookie Man. From the Baltimore Club Classics. Here we go. Like, all right. Ooh. Uh, got the Donna Summer sample. Like, all right. But, like, wait a second. He's, 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 oh, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's got a dirty, mi- I think, I think this Dookie Man guy has quite the dirty mind. Taking this innocent song of, from Donna Summer and making it a song called I'm Coming. <laughs> Yes, this is this is I'm coming. Yeah, this is crazy. This is out of pocket, Dookie man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this being the longest song of the episode is is was was kind of an intentional choice. Which, by, by the way, we we before we continue on with with Doogie Man and this song, R.I.P. Miss Tony, aka Big Tony. I don't know if no, we no, said it's, that. It's Doogie Man. I mean, also I, this Miss Tony. Well, died no, I was early. saying before yeah, the yeah. track before. I was just saying the yeah, track yeah, before. Yeah, I did yeah, not. Yeah. I did not know that Miss Tony had passed. Yeah. I just want to um, say R.I.P. to Big Tony. There's a really good. Uh, I, try, I should find it and shout it. Out. I read. Yeah. There's a great uh, Fact Magazine article from 2016 about Miss Tony. Uh, that includes a image of a uh, a mural in Baltimore that says Miss Tony said how you want to carry it, which is uh, one of the classic. There's also a really great uh, compilation that Miss Tony is on. I'm just gonna talk over this because it makes good background. Um, there's a really great compilation called uh, Unruly Records. It's Unruly Anthology. Um, from 1991 to 1995, which is the early years of Baltimore Club with people like uh, DJ Booman, Miss Tony, uh, Scotty B, um, DJ Class, Griffman. A lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of great great producers that came out of Baltimore and... Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I, I, Sorry, I, I, just, I, I heard I, the moaning I, and I, I just, it took, it I, took I, me I, out. I, I give you a pass. To, to skip the rest this, of this. Like, the song is fun. The song is good, but again, I think it the, is the, fun. The, the, the random moaning samples that sound like they're put all bumped up a little bit too much in the mix. That's like, oh, okay. Totally. It's, just, they, they, it's gonna make me laugh. They, they, are, they are pretty loud in the mix. It's also really oh, funny there, there how, again. how like rhythmically timed they are. Like, he's not just throwing them in the background. Like, he's deploying them. He's timing them really well. To, intentionally. To, to this is the thing, the is that He's making you laugh, but he's also making you. Think. It's like how New York is exactly. a character in movies. The moans are a character in the song. <laughs> I mean, this is, exactly. this is like a lot of great club songs are literally built around like a sound effect, as much as they can be built around like a lyric or a hook or whatever. It's just like, yeah, exactly. And I play the song in my set on, on Wednesday that has a lot of moans in it. It's a little more tasteful than this is, but like, yeah, you you you, you can be you can be cheeky with it, you know. Like Chapel Roan. I also just I also just really love the way that they have chopped up the I'm coming. It's very YouTube poop uh predecessor, you know? Like Yeah, we, I we, mean for as, 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 as long as humans have had music, we have been making uh parodies. And the Indie Heads podcast, uh, uh. And, and people like our dear Alex, we, we believe in this, you know? We carry this tradition yeah. on adding the word poop into songs, you know? Yeah. Or mm-hmm. saying, like, what, what if you took this word out of the song and all of a sudden Don Summer was saying, I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was Just, probably again, some taking this beautiful part song in, like, the medieval times that was, like, a Weird Al kind of situation. Yeah, there are some songs <laughs> in this playlist that I think uh, are good candidates for the, like, would you playlist to, like, uh, kill a, a prehistoric person or whatever. Like, like if someone from the Renaissance era heard DJ Dion, would they, like, explode? I don't think so. I think they'd like it. I, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, now, let's move on to the next track. Uh, yeah. I, I'm getting uh, impatient, uh, which is perfect for as a segue for this next track, which is called uh, When Can We Bone? I sh- like I should have set my crossfade to like twelve seconds, so like <laughs> you could have done <laughs> would have, a everything would have gone in right in. Uh, yeah, this is when can we bone from Drew Sky. 
I forget uh, what again, this we're, is. We're slowing for it down me. a little bit. I kind of like the Where piano swells. The intro feels very Brian Pumper. I I will say this well, song like Brian Pumper would have said something this, horrible by now. <laughs> this is true. Not not this the vocals, true. but like the production. You know, the, 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 the production sounds like porn soundtrack music. You know? Oh, music. totally. I was gonna say the production here, like it's this sounds like something that like Dean Blunt would sample. Like I, I would hear the sample on a Dean Blunt song, not yeah. right now, but like the beginning stuff is like okay. Shywax has a lot of very good like minimal uh, like ghetto tech house techno stuff from Chicago, and like they have reissued a lot of like very classic track producers. Like um, a couple of my favorite Paul Johnson tracks are on Shywax, this label. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of really good stuff. They have a, a um, Bandcamp page that has like all their releases on it. But there's also a lot of it is on Spotify. So highly recommend. There's like a couple of uh, playlists of the Shy Wax stuff on streaming services that you can pull up easily if you search for it. Uh, but yeah, just like great Chicago club music. And I like this one just because it's very uh repetitive but also like actually has a this is a this is a jacking house is what you kind of describe as stuff that has that like i don't know how to describe it besides that it jacks like you know like it goes on it lands on the upbeat as opposed to being like a smoother thing it's got this like forward leaning momentum to the rhythm i don't know how to describe it in music terms but it's good Mm-hmm. It, it kind of has that kind of like almost anxiety like tension feeling to it a lot of time with the, with these bass lines too that like feel like yeah. it's like it's like prodding at you basically which means perfect mm-hmm. for this song you know it's this guy just being like come on when you're horny we can we fuck please can we fuck come on can we fuck yeah. please, please can we fuck? yeah it's like a, it's kind it's of the adult version of are we there yet can I get a hug ass song mm-hmm we don't have to spend too long on it. I was about to say, yeah, this is one of the, the, yeah. least, the less interesting ones to discuss. And we have a real uh, taste test that we're about to do next. So well, let's do I, yeah. <laughs> well, I was saying that because I was sad about the No Lonely Hearts. And I just wanted to talk about them for like a minute. But I understand if, if we're booked then for time. We're probably, we're probably cutting every time due to other tangents be committed I, I to. Understandable. This understandable. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's move Rest on to. Uh, yeah. Shout Let's to, get to uh, shout out to Drew Sky by the way. I don't think we shouted out the producer of this track. This is also, by the way, from uh, the EP Fuck Tonight, um, which also has a song called Pussy, which is spelled P U S Z E E, which is a first for me. But uh, there's a track on this disco band that is just like a great track that is a song that I uh, uh, stole from a Momo Ready DJ set. So got it, got it, got to give him the props there for putting me on mm-hmm. this EP. But uh, yeah. Let's listen to uh, a DJ Sluggo, a returning veteran. I had two people from the last episode with songs that had similar. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm stretching, but I think these two songs have some like thematic underpinnings that connect. <laughs> Matt, do you think I'm reaching here? Like, I think this is a no, good. No, I mean these next two have a lot of you know like like art and history <laughs> like echoes sometimes. Maybe it doesn't echo, but it rhymes. You know. Like, mm-hmm. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Exactly. You know? Exactly. It's like George Lucas said. Um, <laughs> uh, they I think do the song love is, their high-pitched about, vocals. It's like, what's the, what's the one tweet where it's like, $10,000 just hit my direct deposit, go to Dick Sporting Good, and give me the balls, too. <laughs> you can and go this, to the golf is, section and steal them. I won't watch. Ooh, yeah. I guess uh, Dick Sporting yeah, Good has all kinds of balls. It's kind of crazy. I was going to say lots of balls and dicks. I will say that, obviously, <laughs> oh. um, this song Dick is my... Dick's a sex toy sex chart. Sorry, go without, on. Without, without giving away my uh, taste test here, this is not one of my favorite DJ sl- Sluggo tracks. I have a lot of... He, similarly to DJ Rashad, has, like, one... Well, he doesn't even have, like, a, an album album. He has, like, a Dance Mania Ghetto Classics, like, uh, hit... He's the uh, the creator of Would You Like to Be a Ho Too, which is famous mm-hmm. for the uh, the WAP sample. But uh, besides that one great hits compilation, he has like eleven, I think it is like EPs uh, that are have a Wait. lot of 
really great. I mean, not in total, but like he has this one series of EPs that are called. Let me find it. Uh, Did what else? Yeah, Pussy mm-hmm. sample DJ Sluggo. Yes. Oh. Well, I, actually, I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's DJ Sluggo. There's also a Miami bass track that has a very similar refrain. I'm not sure which one came first. I have to I have to go look look. Uh, I have to I have to go to like Discogs and find the actual release date because a lot of the time on streaming, the release date isn't correct. You know. So you got to really do your homework to check things like that. But uh, I was referring to the DJ Sluggo uh, Juke Chronicles EPs, um, which there yeah. are 11 of that are all very good. And also he just put out a single with Lauren Flax that's very sick. But uh, it was not horny enough to sub it in for uh, I was just saying, yeah, this, yeah during, the, during the refrain we just heard, it's it's in the same rhythm as th- there's some whores in this house from the, the from WAP. That's the other thing, too, is it, it is... It's not the same as same fucking song again because same fucking song again guys are making the same song over and over again with the intention of like selling each one commercially as it is a new thing whereas these guys i think of them more in the way i think of like uh uh larry mcmurtry or like uh, a famous author who has one topic that they like to cover over and over again or certain like motifs Filmmaking. They're like woodworkers. It's almost like you know, open they're, they're, source coding. They have these like phrases or like too. snippets I mean, from I, songs. A lot that of it, just, it, like, it, it's like nursery rhymes choose. or chants, because that's like the thing is that like so much of the um, call and response stuff of Miami Bass we talked about last time. It's literally like these things just form like socially. Like I don't know mm-hmm. if the song came first or the people saying "Hey, we want some pussy" came first. You know, it was probably people saying "Hey, we want some pussy" first, and then they turned it into a song. You know, like all of these things do feel like they have an oral tradition to them. Not to be uh, no, that that was intentional. I'm not gonna pretend like that was on purpose. Um, <laughs> but yes, of course, the reason why I included this is really because. DJ it's, just, it's funny to have two songs called no, balls man, around the other, but the only difference though. being an S or a Z. And I will say, uh, I definitely prefer. Uh, I think DJ Dion's balls are a little more uh, preferable to me than than DJ Sluggos. You know, they're more delectable. There's layers, in my here. humble opinion. There's some more flavor. Yeah, you know the way he drops you in with the little. Uh, I don't know, it's like a, it's based on a nursery rhyme, right? Oh yeah, little... for sure. <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know what it is exactly. I've. It's a. Uh, uh, I, I was just. I just was trying to poise it. And I lost it. It's mm-hmm. not. Um, it's not three blind mice. It's. It, it, is it. Is it hot cross buns? No, no, no. Isn't that some shit that like Barney was singing about? No, literally. Like, like, like. Won't they... you say you love me too? Because they they Wait, wanted wasn't to be it so... Barney. No, it's not Barney. Barney I is using you, you Barney. Me. Barney is using the nursery rhyme song. That 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 what exists is that? as what a nursery rhyme. What is the Barney rhyme. song based on? But the, no, but this is what I'm saying. The whole point of all of these is that they've existed for so long, and they have these rhymes and cadences to them, such that you just reuse them. Like the Barney "I Love You" song is not an original joint. That's him using a nursery rhyme and just putting different words to it, which is also what DJ Dion is doing right like it's this it's it's just these things have existed pre-recorded music max i'm looking like, on the like, barney wiki it seems like it might be an original <laughs> i'm trying to think um i'm on the barney fandom yeah, wiki. But, but, but also this is the same thing as like the you, you know those like uh youtube videos it's like uh th- four perfect chords or whatever it's just yeah. like this is how music works Oh is yeah, that totally. You just take a cadence and a rhythm, and if you say something different and put a different context around it, people don't realize you're repeating the exact same thing. Right? right? There's all kinds of examples of like famous songs that share chords but have different like cultural connotations because you've recontextualized it. Yeah. Take yeah. your balls. Which is I also- feel like the song is giving subliminal messages. You know, there's a subliminal message in the song. And you know, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a straight man, of course. I'm a straight man, but you know, I feel like you know, kind of want some balls in my mouth. I don't know. It's just I, I don't, I don't know what. You know, I just, I, I don't know for sure if that's what the song is saying, but like that's just you know what it's telling me subliminally. 
There was a song that I had. <laughs> I, I'm trying to. I'm playing. I'm now going into my fucking memory palace because I have a song that literally starts with a like. The DJ has been sending subliminal messages, ass like intro. So I'm trying to think of that real quick. Hold on. Did mm-hmm. I download it recently? I can find it. Uh, let, let's introduce our next song while I vamp. Yeah. Or, let this oh, vamp. Noted. Noted good All right. guy. Let's move into so. So of course that's a thing. <laughs> Balls in the mouth, but you know. Here's the it, thing. It's a synced. It's I, simple. Sometime, here's, it's the clean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, he he dropped the the. It's just it's just ball. By the way, balls. we should know for the listeners in case you're trying to look these songs up later. Uh, balls by DJ Sluggo is spelled with an S, and then balls is spelled with a Z in the DJ Dion edition. You keep them straight mm-hmm. that way. Exactly, and uh, you know, here's the thing. You know, the, you know, men. You know, we want to put our balls in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I we want to put our balls in women's <laughs> mouths sometimes all right that is that is when we're, when we're peak thought, horny thought, that's what know, we want to do you were trying to do the the world's sweatiest transition to our next track I thought well, you, I, yeah. i'm still doing it i'm still in the process but here's the thing sometimes we want to put something in our mouths and i think uh, ass and titties we want to put those in our mouths sometimes so our next song dj salt with ass and titties famous pairs dicks balls yeah, that was that was pretty sweaty. Again, I couldn't I couldn't complete this, this, this I couldn't complete the segue. It makes me laugh so much. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more explicitly horny ones on the on the playlist this week. Yeah, DJ mm-hmm. always always brings it. Ass and titties. Yeah, and this just goes. Just fucking goes. I think this song is also bringing us uh, subliminal messages. Like, damn, I want ass. And damn, I want titties. Is this is this making you break your no-fap oath or making you feel like wavering? I mean, it, this, is the, this is the closest. You want to use closest, your yeah. wiener for evil and not for good? Again, I gotta resist the urges, Max. But they're definitely pulling me. All right, the the, the <laughs> I'm cursed with those ur- those urges, you know. And I the, the curses really come to the fruition, <laughs> to fruition, you know. Um, especially because, like, yeah, like I said, the, the, the thing is that these songs are so camps. repetitive too. It's just it, it, it's one thing if it's just like, okay, here's an idea, and we kind of we'll come back to it later. These ideas are drilled in your head, you know. No, this is the and, thing. It's 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 literally conditioning. Exactly. Yeah, are there any musicians with a lot of life force out there? Are there any touring musicians? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Killer Mike is is no fap, and he's a you know he's a touring musician. So that that's definitely one that I think of. I think probably there's probably a lot of like prog, prog and like metal guys, definitely like prog metal for sure. That are probably no fappers, you know. That think that not fapping lets them uh, tap that guitar real, real good and make those crazy time signatures they couldn't do otherwise i work with census um, data a lot for my job I mean, i'd I, love to have a count of like i i, I wonder i wonder if, if daddy riff lord uh, ever does it himself or if he only does it with assistance you know mm-hmm. i feel oh. like if he's got the only fans there's definitely times wait, where you know you got you got to do a solo show this is an important question for killer mike does it count as some real if someone else is jerking off for does that count as yes as i think that's off? distinctly different I, I think he considers that real. I think I think for him like real is a woman doing any like real. it's 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 getting sloppy toppy, it's fucking, it's getting a handy, like it's all that's all real. <laughs> if it's just if it's you, it's not real. You know, it's I just fake. imagine someone like walking if this we're not in one room right now, but imagining we all were in one room and someone just walking in on the, like in the <laughs> middle of this conversation with no contact. If me if me and Max were doing this from the pod the podcasting booth inside that bar in Durham, that would be that would be what's happening. That you know, is something someone... I love to do specifically when I'm hiking is if I'm having a conversation with someone, I'll just like make sure that when I'm passing someone going the other direction, I'm saying something crazy. Um so like that's their only impression of me. And that's hopefully what they're like. I know I've gotten a couple reactions from people, um, 
but I think I do it naturally enough to where it doesn't come across as forced. Um, and, it, yeah. and it's really fun just to give people a little jolt of energy and excitement throughout their day. I do it for the other people, not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, uh, like, well, obviously we, we hung out pretty re We hung out a couple days ago to watch the survivor season finale. And I feel like there was, I, I feel like there was not as many max insights as, as per usual, but I think it's because we were all so locked in on, on survivor and, uh, hating Liz. I feel like we were all coming together to really hate on this white woman that, uh, evolution should have weeded out for all of her allergies and stuff. Yeah. Um, um, I don't which, know if you ja saw Jackie, we're sorry to, sorry to, to dump survivor lore on you, but no. there's, there's, there's a, cont there was a contestant on the most recent season who had like a bunch of allergies and yet still competed and like complain about being like very hungry all the time. And it's like, but, like, why, like, why are you here then? Yeah, you need the rice. Eat rice, and it's like you can't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of hard to be like this isn't fair in a show that is literally trying to recreate survival of the fittest. It's like, well, yeah. isn't that kind of the whole show? Yeah, and I think her her peak like like holy shit moment was there was uh one like one of the competitions, and the winner got to pick a couple of people to have Applebee's. Like, hey, you can come, you can eat Applebee's with me. And the guy that won specifically did not pick Liz and she freaked the fuck out. She was screaming. She's like, I'm pissed. Like, just like went full Karen with it. And I walked in when that was happening with no context. And I was just like, what the fuck have I walked into? Yeah, no, she was Who's screaming Survivor? at him. I've never, I'd never seen anything. I've watched probably like 35 to 40 seasons of Survivor. Never seen anything like it. Uh, for additional context, um, there are people who are willing to give up their spot on the reward, the reward of eating Applebee's um, to Liz um, so she could go. And the guy who won reward was like, no, you can't you can't give up your spot. I'm going with you. I'm not bringing her, which is which is like a crazy. <laughs> kind so of, cold, which is. Yeah, because she. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of going back to the core. argument of you can't you can't eat the rice like. That's your problem. Well, I know. I think she was able to eat rice. I think she was not allergic oh, to I rice. Oh, I thought it was like a because she because later on because later right, on she decided to like get into deep in okay, the weeds. we're getting too in the weeds. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but speaking Jackie. of Survivor, of course, uh, this most recent season of Survivor fine. takes place on the beach, and this our next true. song, our final song, is "Sex on okay. the Beach" two thousand from Mister D. Um, I believe there's also a uh, on the. Uh, D DJ Assault, I believe, has a version of this. So, like, some of these people will just remake them. I'm not sure which one is the original. I prefer this version because this is a more melodious singer than DJ Assault. Uh, but I heard this for the first time, I believe, when I saw um, a DJ Holographic play one of the parties we threw in college at Memco. Uh, and, yeah, it's just a banger. This is, like... A great song gets stuck in my head every time I listen to it. Yeah, it's very fun. Yeah, I think last. I mean, you said it already, but the last episode is very focused on uh, the outwardly horny and ridiculous songs, and I feel like with this one you just locked into some solid like club and footwork songs. Um, and yeah, that just happened to be about sex. Yeah, yeah. Th th this one, th there, there, there was a, a balance of things, but yeah, I think this was like. I wanted to kind of come back not only to say R.I.P. to Dookie Man and DJ Dion who passed in those times since the last episode, but also I wanted to kind of close the book, you know, on some of these things to, that, that like were left on the cutting room floor of the first episode or regions that we hadn't covered as much on the first time around. Or Yeah, so I think I did a really good job of covering all the bases so that we never have to do this. Wait, what's that? Hold on. What? I'm getting a I'm getting a call. Hold on. Okay, hold can, on. Can you check the Zoom chat really quick, Maddie? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. What's what's? Oh boy. Oh God. Oh got... good lord. Oh good lord. A <laughs> hey. Maddie, can you read oh, what it's, it says? It's, oh no, it's coming. Oh, a third a third wow. horny club song playlist has hit the Indie Heads wow. podcast. A third. A, <laughs> <laughs> a plane a plane is they they hit the fucking pentagon Matt, Matty, they can, hit can, the goddamn can pentagon read, can you read the title of this one 
Max, read it. Oh, I, oh, I thought it was. I thought you read it, Max. I said, yeah. I said, Mad, I said Maddie. But... <laughs> oh, you said me. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> that, that, that's the issue when we, we, we both have names that begin with M. That was so funny. Uh, to choose to be so aggro. Slayer. Like, oh, this is because Max. Was, I was like, because Max, because Max, Max gets at me for not listening. Sometimes they get mad at me for not listening or being on my you phone. Got I, and I, I got, I got a chance to get at him, but it was actually on me. Uh, Horny Club Three. Somehow the sucking and fucking returned. And, That's right, people. Uh, this is probably inspired got, by uh, me digging into the <laughs> Carrie Chandler discography and realizing there was a nine-plus-minute-long song from Carrie Chandler's alter ego called Dick Diggler. But that's a story for next time. <laughs> that's yeah. That's I, I just crazy. gotta say that. Uh, from from can, the I, can, I, can I read some of the track names? Sure, go ahead. Quick, go ahead. Let, okay. Let's, let's announce them for, because this one, it, it was funny that we ended on, the reason why I introduced it now is because <laughs> you ended on that note of like, yeah, Jackie, these were a little more restrained. This was more of a good time. Maddie, I want you to read the tracks that I picked for, for this next episode whenever we do this. Hey, guy. Buddy. All right. So first one is going to be, are you married? And it's like, okay, that's a. All right, a little, a little spicy. When you, when you like, hear, all right. When you hear that song, there, there's there's more there's more questions than of yeah, course there's but... more to it. Uh, we got "Dick by the Pound," followed by "Gay Guy." Yes, we we we, by, we, 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 we made your boy DJ, DJ is so asked to say about "Gay Guy." Th- that that thing is "Gay Guy" was invoked on the first episode. Then I actually did listen to it and and I approved it. it it's. But then immediately, of course, yeah, gay guy is followed by homoerotic by Aaron Carl, and then, and then ghost dick <laughs> by DJ so, Guy. And this is this is this playlist: thirteen songs, uh, one hour three minutes, <laughs> one hour three minutes. Natalie, Natalie oh, notably boy. didn't say a freaky bitches because he probably didn't say want to say that word. Oh, uh, what free bitches? Bitch, yeah. <laughs> why 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 can't I say bitches? <laughs> you can. You can. I, I mean, I, I mean, freaky bitches. A, I, a, I was just, I did, I didn't say one that's not as funny as it's not as funny as Dick by the Pound followed by Gay Guy. Dick by the Pound or Gay Guy or Ghost Ghost Dick. When I showed Ghost Dick to Grant, Grant was like, "I'm so happy. This is incredible." Everyone has oh, known a freaky B word in their life, and it's not something to laugh about. It's something no. to think about. Uh, but to yeah, think about and enjoy. If, if you want to learn what a "Titty Inferno" by Big Daddy Rick sounds like, you're gonna have to tune in again to next 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 time on next horny, time later later this year on presumably. Club songs. But yeah, no, obviously, like as long as there has been dance music, it has been about fucking because dance music is not, although not necessarily. Like this is uh, not to get into a David Byrne uh, how music works <laughs> tangent, but obviously, like musical genres are informed by their socioeconomic context in ways that we've discussed today. And there was this kind of mind blowing thing that the book, the idea that the book introduces about like that, that rhythmic music is associated with like low class and that like things that are considered to be like uh, holy music or like spiritual music tend to be like of a certain like slowness and sparseness and the reasons for that are not because of inherent qualities of music the reasons why church music is slow and sparse is because of the acoustics of churches it's literally about like the acoustics of spaces where music is created and so like the reason why um church music is like droney is because if there's a lot of note changes in like a, a space that has a lot of reverb like if you church music doesn't have a lot of really fast notes because if there's a ton of reverb in the space a ton of really fast notes would sound crazy in a bad way you know like you want to have slow note changes in that kind of a space because that's just going to go over better so that's why like church music is like that broadly and so like and then he compares that to like these styles of dance music that are rhythm based and sort of come from africa and come from places where music was an outdoor thing it was a social thing and rhythm is the thing that carries over wide outdoor spaces it's why dance music is popular at music festivals because it's like good for being out in a field whereas like if you try to see neutral milk hotel at coachella it's not really the right environment to to receive Mm -hmm. that music right like being out in open spaces rhythm travels further it's received more easily because it's it, it it doesn't it need to be enclosed in a space for it to hit as hard whereas rock music you want to see inside a show and so all of that is to say like 
music that we think of as being spiritual is only because of the specific architecture of Western religion, right? And like Mm -hmm. what dance music, music that is oriented in dancing was often very spiritual and is very spiritual in other cultures. And so all of that to say is that like, if you thought I was going big picture last time, I've now gone Mm -hmm. even further out. And now of course you can get very corny about this. Like David Byrne, has a chapter in that book called or like a subheading called we are all Africans. And that's where you, oh. you tip a little <laughs> no. further and he's right, right. You know, like we all do. Come like, technically from there, he is correct. But exactly. But... You, you get very close to being, um, Courtney love saying the N word in the nineties, you know, like, or Bjork in the 2010s. <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I look that, that music, that, Music, it makes you think, it makes you laugh, it makes you want to suck and fuck. And that's that's the beauty of it. It contains multitudes. It brings the people together. Music make you lose control. Uh, music is my life. Just it, those it, are some, some it, words. Music is my heart. We need to come up with the Indie Heads prayer. Speaking of religion. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a ga- that that's gonna be that's a Gav Max project. Yeah. I think you two or, or, gotta you, 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 you two you gotta cook together. It, you know who AJ could write us an indie hits prayer. Oh, I mean a, a, AJ is the a, AJ, alleged writer of a, the a, Dave a, poem. So a, AJ loves a creative writing prompt. I don't need it to this be too true. long. I want it to be kind of short, like a like a pre dinner kind of routine. Exactly, like a prayer, a prayer or, before or, dinner, or, or like know? or like an extended like slogan, or like sort of like a secret handshake, like when we meet yeah, each other, exactly. We, we all say like mm-hmm. praise be to Dave, porno yeah. on high, something like exactly. That. Music is exactly. my life. I remember the hearts, um, <laughs> which we we didn't even touch on that. That, that that's then, probably and, the next and, episode. And, and the memories bring back memories bring back you. Oh yeah, that's wow. right. Me, 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 we should we should say uh. Uh, I'm going to just read the out of context, the sentence that Maddie posted in our discord today, which was, uh, where is it? Uh, is it, is it the one where I, (laughs) which one is it? There was a lot of, there was, this was a big posting day for us. I I did not realize how many there were because I'm scrolling in the stars. There's so many. (laughs) Oh, cause I'm not, I'm not in the no lonely. That's why. Um, where is it? Uh, bu- 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 oh, is it the is it the the, the gang stalking one? Yeah, exactly. Can you read that? Uh, yeah. Hold on, let me let me let it's me pull your, it up it's your really post. quick. You can just say it. Yeah. Well, I, I again today was a bit of a fever dream, of course. So you know, it was I a very it was very. Dream. I think it was. Very it was bad. more of a nightmare. A nightmare. It was kind of a nightmare. I thought you were thinking of the thing where I, I said Max is kind of moving like a two year old child who's learning how to walk for the first time. What? No, I was yeah. doing the only hard stance. I, oh, here it is. Uh, uh, oh, so, oh, here we go. Uh, yeah. Sad, <laughs> sad news: the struggling boy band we were gang stalking didn't make it. <laughs> Which feels it really like did a- heal, it, it hit like a ton of bricks because you yeah. say they're not going to make it, you say they're not going to make it, but deep but down you hope they do, and then all really? of a sudden the like, Instagram goes black, and you're like, well. It's it's like your kids going to college. It's always going to be too soon. Uh, two things: mm-hmm. one, that message reads like an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode title. The struggling boy band we were gang stalking didn't make it. You just have to add the gang <laughs> in there. The struggling boy band, the gang was gang. Oh, it has gang stalking. It's I think if we can re yeah. if we can rebrand that properly, we might be able to get a tell off. And then, uh, sec- <laughs> second of all, um, don't mention the gang stalking. Just say we we had a. a in, we were invested listen, in the story of listen, Nolan Hearts. We, listen, next, a vested interest. By this time next week, we will have already started the free Britney style cult. I mean, movement in order to rescue No Lonely Hearts from their record deal. Their terrible, terrible deal. They've been put we're in a do ter- January six on Heartland. They've been put in a terrible deal, and we need to bust them out of the deal. They got locked right. into a three sixty deal. That's a topic. Gonna, we are going. We are for, going to storm the heartland in Florida, everybody. We're going to do it. We're all going to go is, down. That is a topic for next week's podcast. We might yes. need to start well, like a straight to Tubi reality show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it was Max. Were you the one that said that? I imagine this is how the the big bop, the guy that was trying to make the big bopper documentary. This must be how he feels. It's like we were working on the story for years, and they just tweeted it out. You know? Yeah. For real. For real. Um, but before we uh, wrap up this episode, I, I remember to do this because I, I keep forgetting to do this because uh, I want to start doing this. So, you know, 
just gotta got we we want to thank our patrons of course we thank our real ones the top anyone that supports us for five dollars or more a month uh but of course they are they are just a few of our patron supporters we have many more and those that are just just our our regular west mud club members so i want to thank a couple people before we finish up this episode I want to thank Kevin Cookman. I want to thank Eric. I want to thank Barely March. I want to thank uh, Carol. I want to thank Josh. I want to thank uh, Guiana. I want to thank Holiday Kirk. I want to thank Tyrone, uh, Jaden, Alexis, Cody, uh, uh, Vinka, uh, Will, Corbin, uh, Gavlin, Matthew, Ethan, uh, Ethan Sapir, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin B, uh, David Simon, uh, Matthew McPherson, Randy Donaldson, Eleanor, Eleanor uh, Will for Thrill, Gay Horse for Twenty, Lily. Uh, who's the, uh, ju- ju- Juki Juki Jukalin? What are you doing, Kodega? Oh, he's, 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 pretend, he's pretending to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, don't know, I, don't, I just ju- very, Jukalin K- Kudiga. I just. I don't. No, that, that's that, a weird. That, that, that's that's my uh, footwork pseudonym is Jukalin. Goddamn. Oh, um, Alec that's Felder. genius. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Talks of Trees, uh, Molly O'Brien, AJ Moser, Erase Red Baby, uh, Matthew H., uh, Jack Tiggs, uh, Sarah520, Jeremy Bowl, Alex Gershmanoff, and Derek Pemberton. So thank you all for continuing to support this podcast. And if you want to have your name read at the end of the episode, of course, you can support us on Patreon for just $1 a month. You get your episodes 48 hours early. You get access to the Discord, and you get some fucking stickers. That's a for one dollar for all that. I think that's I think that's a great goddamn deal. So uh, continue to support us on Patreon because we have some big things coming uh, later on this summer. So you definitely want to join and maybe get in even on the ground floor. Uh, music that's good. Who knows? Yeah, maybe we anything. Maybe, is maybe our name will become. Maybe our name. Maybe our name of the Indians podcast will be accurate once again. You know who 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 knows. Uh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure listening. we're still going to talk about uh, 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 Dick's income, though. That's that. That's a year. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna. It, it. You can't. You have to talk about it when it comes to this podcast. We can't. We can't get away, folks. From we it, love. So. We love to talk about Dick's income on the Indie Heads, don't we, folks? Don't we? The, the people that come up to me every day and they say, "Jackie, I like the Indie Heads podcast." But we I just wish, wish you, you talked talk about, about come more. Exactly. I don't talk about splooge or or semen or ejaculate. None of yeah. it. <laughs> we've Never reached the, the point box. of <laughs> we've reached the point of the recording where we can say whatever the hell we want. Yeah, the ad sponsors are listening to this deep. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but thank you all for for listening to this very nasty, dirty, uh, explicit episode. And uh, yeah, we will see you next week as, let's see, what do we have up on the board next week uh, for the podcast? I believe uh, we have, so we have two things. Uh, Number one, uh, we will have a bonus episode of Crap or Not Crap Volume 2, and that's only going to be exclusive to the Real Ones patrons. So that's $5 and up for those supporters. Of course, part one was available to all of our Patreon supporters, but hey, you want to hear some more of uh, mine, Jackie, and Jay's opinions coming up? Uh, that'll be out before the uh, month of May ends. And then, uh, of course, we have some... Uh, of course, next month is June, and that is Pride Month, and we have some Pride Month episodes planned uh, for 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 y'all. Uh, I, 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 I As a straight man, I got a lot of warning to do. I got to be a good ally. And so we got some good stuff coming up in June. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you scheduled the first white boy heaters during Black History Month, and then you scheduled the second white boy heaters during Pride Month. Look, I, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. We're doing the Pride episodes first, so we're, we're doing our allotted hey, allyship, hey, and hey, then hey, we Max. can we can get back to the hey, good hey, shit. Hey, you know, hey, 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 Max. I don't I don't want to. Uh, uh, be be too too woke here, but uh, white boys can be gay too. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Max. You're showing your <laughs> ignorance. Your ignorance is showing. All right, that's a good point. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, uh, but yeah, the, but I think we have White Boy Heroes Volume Two, and then uh, we we may have uh, some stuff we'll be announcing pretty soon coming up after that. So you'll just have to wait and see. But thank you all for listening, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Wide open and shaking it on the floor. She said, If I get a tissue, we gon' leave and hit the mouth.
told her, girl, here you go. I tease her on the low, now she freaking me on the flow. She freaking me on the flow. She busting it wide open and shaking it on the flow. She said if I get a dissa, we gon' leave and hit the mo. I told her, girl, here you go. I tease her on the low, now she freaking me on the flow. She freaking me on the flow. She busting it wide open and shaking it on the flow. She said if I get a dissa, we gon' leave and hit the mo. I told her, girl, here you go. I tease her on the low, now she freaking me on the flow.